This might be the most unusual change to a bike I've seen in a long time. All right, let's get into it. The new Marlin 5 Gen 3 has been roughly announced. I've seen on a few other YouTube channels. I Google searched it now and it does show up, but as an archived product, as if it's not available for ordering potentially North America and some other countries. So overall, I'm not sure where we stand with this, but we can go over the small amount of details that we do have for the new Marlin 5. The Marlin 5 is obviously Trek's go-to selling model. It has been for a long time and has been one of the most popular reviewed bikes out there on the internet, not just on my channel, but overall. It is a stepping stone from the people looking to either get into mountain biking or they've started with their entry level stuff from the big box stores and now they're looking for something a little more appropriate for what they're doing. The Marlin series has and always will be entry level to a degree. You can really go anywhere and do anything on these. They're a very well built mountain bike. But the part spec in the world of mountain biking is still limiting to a degree. Big changes on this one are not as visible. There are not many big changes on this one as you'd expect. They really have just changed the drivetrain and updated the frame. We'll touch on the frame right away. This we've already seen with the newer Gen 3 Marlin. So it matches that newer updated geometry where minorly better handling in the front end, more control in the overall bike with a redesign. We will touch in the we'll touch with the frame quickly. This has had its new updated Gen 3 redesign, which all the other ones have pretty much gone to already. It gets to a slacker head tube angle and a steeper seat angle. These minor differences, if you don't know, will just make it more comfortable downhill, but will also make sure you're on top of the pedals for a good pedaling efficiency. Finding this balance is a big challenge for every mountain bike manufacturer, and they are constantly changing. Year after year, though, we are getting closer to a more optimal seating and ride position for comfort and performance at the same time. These new Marlins have rode really well, they respond superbly, but they are still in a relatively comfortable position that you're going to enjoy it. It's not like a grandma's cruiser, but it is a mountain bike that is comfortable to ride. That new frame also comes with the through skew rear axle. So instead of the axle being able to drop the wheel out below when loosened, you'll actually need to take that whole axle out for the wheel to come off. This will in turn make it a little stiffer. It's not going to make a huge difference. Let's not, you know, you'd have to be on a scientific level. I'd be surprised if most people would even feel it on the trail. But technically speaking, it will be a stiffer controlling rear end. And most importantly, for newer riders and honestly experienced riders, it's a lot easier to get everything lined up correctly without issue if it can only fit one way. It goes through a hole, enters through the other hole, and can only be lined up when it's lined up. There's no worrying of whether or not this is going to work. So that is a nice little feature. A little bit more protection on the frame as well. They've made it that the chainstay protector is a little beefier. I like that touch. This is something that has scratched up a lot. You see it on a lot of used ones. The chain slap is crazy. With a cheaper mountain bike, the chain is on looser than what a higher end one would be. This isn't really like a downside, except for the fact that on aggressive herd trails, your chain slaps around a lot and chips away at the paint. Now, older models used to either come with a thin piece of rubber or a clear coat plastic piece over it which essentially did nothing over a few years, this will actually take care of your bike and protect it for future, long-term future-wise. Like, this will really make a big difference in the long-term. Sure, paint chips aren't too bad, but eventually you get metal chips, it really starts wearing away and it like sandpapers it away. And because your chain will slap around a little more, you don't have as much suspension, you're a hardtail, you only have limited gears, it does just bounce around, so this is honestly more important on this bike than it would be on the bigger, fancier bikes with higher chain tension, wider gear range, everything that makes it a little more higher performance. This requires it almost more than the higher performance ones. Front suspension is the same, so nothing changed there. It, it works. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a 
spring fork, it works well. Uh, just an SR Suntour XCM30, it works well. There's nothing really fancy about it. It does have lockout, so you can turn it off if you want, but honestly, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It'll probably just work just fine. You can upgrade this to a max compatible fork of 120 mils, and they do still sell the adapters now, so you can actually fit a slightly uh, better fork in there with a tapered head tube instead of the straight head tube, which I think is a really nice addition that you could do. It also will change the geometry and slacken it all out. It will mess with it all a little bit, but because they've designed this frame around upgrades, it, it is a, a nice little addition. Wheel, it is not tubeless ready, which is neither here nor there. They'll work, they'll be fine. They're just heavier than some of the higher end stuff and potentially not as durable, but you've got to really be hitting it hard and you'll be looking at upgrades when you're doing something like bending a wheel. I do like that it's got that new XT3 comp tire on it. It's just a 30 TPI, so it's not the fastest rolling, but it's got good durability and excellent traction on the sides. This is the big up from last year's models they're just going to be better off-road this tire is designed for cross-country trails as opposed to that kind of road kind of sometimes kind of mountain kind of sometimes they didn't really know where they were and they weren't bad or good for either of them they worked well the xrs but these xt3s are definitely going to roll nice and fast in town and be extremely grippy on the out of town stuff so now we get into the big change. And this I think is the big peculiar change, which I'm unsure if it's a good one or a bad one. They've got Shimano, so it's still name brand, good stuff. It is the new Q's, the U4000 nine speed. That's right, nine speed. There is single speed on the front and nine on the back. So you get a total of nine gears. You do get a relatively wide range cassette. So it's 11 to 46. But that does limit you a little bit on kind of getting into the sport. Although two gears on the front or three gears on the front are not as optimal for operation, it's a little trickier to understand, it's a little harder to do, it does give you this big safety range of gears that you should be able to climb and ride your bike everywhere. With that complication comes ease of riding. But with a simplification comes ease of riding too. With a nine speed, there's only gonna be one shifting unit on the handlebar. It will look clean and it will be a lot simpler for those brand new people to ride. For anyone who has experience riding, the nine speed systems or single speed systems on the front are much easier to ride and operate while you're riding. As well, the chain stays on more effectively. Everything works better mechanically without you having to get over complicated and miss shift or have the chain fall off. There's a lot less risk of that. So the 11 to 46 cassette will get you out of most situations. It does come with a 32 front ring. So it's relatively small, but not super small. I'm unsure whether it's a good size or not. A 28 would mean it's gonna have a much easier gear, but for those commuters, you probably would regret having a 28. It would probably be very difficult to get up to speed and have some fun on the faster flowy stuff or the pavement stuff. So it's a nice compromise. It is just like a pro wheel, no name front end to it. So changing now, I'm not sure on compatibility, whether you're gonna to have to buy a whole new crank, if it's removable. We don't get enough information here as to exactly what everything is hooked up there. You do get the 31.8 mil handlebar, hydraulic disc brakes from Tektro, so they'll work well, they're the MT275s. Like this has been a go-to brake for a very long time. Surprisingly enough, this whole setup with the new frame is about 33 and a half pounds. So I think it's a little heavier than previous years. Hopefully that's durability and construction of frame upgrades, and then the tires will make the biggest jump. Going to a heavier tire, which is a little more luggy and a little heavier grip, it's gonna make a big difference. Overall, 
I'm intrigued to see where this goes. I have no idea when it's coming out or if it's coming out. Obviously, there's no supply chain issues right now. So most likely this is delayed because they want it delayed to reduce volume of other things. Who knows? It's a little tricky to understand. It looks like a Marlin. It'll function like a Marlin. The nine speed is the biggest. I have no idea if that's a good idea, but it's something that makes sense in the mountain biking world. Single chain ring on the front and gears on the back is how everybody is gonna be looking for a bike. Every bike is gonna have it. It does look like it's got the option still to route and put the two gear on the front if you wanted. So if you're doing a little more cross country or you're a faster rider in town and then just have a shortcut off road to go to, you could change it to that. But I think most people would look into upgrading that rear cassette to something bigger. I'm not sure how compatible the cues with the wheel system is. These are these things I just won't know until we see something in person or see more stuff. It doesn't give me all the information on the Trek website as to what is running on the hub or anything like that. So the Marlin 5 will be an excellent bike for anyone still starting out. I wouldn't be afraid of any of the changes, two gears on the front, one gear on the front. I wouldn't be afraid of it. Just know that it may have its limitations depending what you're doing with the smaller gear range. That is the big change of it all. The geometry, you'll love. The tires will be great, but the gear range could affect some people, and that could be the commuters, or that could be the not 100% in shape, still learning, getting out there. Trail riders, you're not going to have that super low gear. That being said, it's going to be much simpler to run, operate, maintain. Everything's going to be nicer that way. It is more mountain bikey. And I think that's the right category for this bike. Shimano Q's has got good reviews and it is nice. It's in a family of kind of components. The Q's system is nine through 11 speed. So you can really potentially change and upgrade this in the future. Hopefully anyway, won't know everything until the bike actually releases or someone shows it to me in person. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, thanks for watching and hopefully this helps you out in the coming months as these pop into retailers. Good luck. Thanks, guys.